Thank you very much. I think that what this is, is it, what, you, what you're seeing here is exemplar of the state of intellectual discourse in America. What you are witnessing here is the state of intellectual discourse in America. Sir, if you will schedule an event, I will come and I will heckle you. You will let me speak, sir. You will let me speak. Here we are on a college campus. Here we are in a college campus in America, and I ask you, I ask you, where is the diversity of opinion? Where is the diversity of thought? Where is the intellectual discourse? Our organization, our organization, our organization. Why are they letting him stay? I mean, this is ridiculous. We came from far away. Give us an opportunity to speak. Oh my God, I've had an opportunity to speak. I just got up here. Our organization. Our organization is dedicated. Our organization is dedicated to freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and individual rights. My work is dedicated to the smallest minority in the world, the individual. Every individual is entitled to equal protection under the law. Our organization is dedicated to freedom of speech, freedom of conscience, and individual rights. My concern is the growing dehumanization and diminishment of women in the West under the Sharia. We have seen, and I know that Simon will address it in Africa, and Noni will address it in the Middle East, but we have seen in the West an increase in honor killings, in forced marriage, and particularly here in America, I'm sure you're familiar with, if you're familiar with the subject matter, the case of Amina and Sarah Saeed, or Noor al Maliki, or Asia Hassan. These are honor killings that are either covered up, or in the case of a young uh, uh, Muslim woman in Florida, Fatima Abdullah, who was abused by her family and would confess to her neighbor that her brother, for example, was doing unspeakable things to her because she was divorced and she was dishonoring her family. She was dis divorced because she could not give her husband children, thereby she was worthless. Needless to say, the woman was murdered in Tampa, Florida, and the law enforcement on the scene said that she was badly beaten, and so on and so forth, but because the medical examiner's office, and I know this because I have an informant in the medical examiner's office, they were afraid that they would inflame the Muslim community. It was, her death was classified as a suicide, that she committed suicide by banging her head on a coffee table repeatedly. You can't bang your head on a coffee table and commit suicide. And no one speaks for this woman. And when we protest and we demand that law enforcement in Florida reopen the case and hire our own private detectives to get the autopsy photos where you see she is beaten and you see her head is beaten, we are called racist, Islamophobic, anti-Muslim bigots. We are not. We speak for Muslim women. Now, Muslim women that want to wear the hijab or want to wear the burqa or want to wear the niqab, all the power to you. But we speak for the woman that is forced to wear the hijab or the niqab or the burqa. Next week, in Dearborn, we're holding the Jessica Mokdad honor killing conference. Now again, here again, we see a great deal of, there's a, there's a huge protest scheduled uh, against the haters, which is, it's, it's a surreal world we're living in. I mean, it's an inverted reality when you talk about people that are fighting for freedom and getting smeared and defamed and marginalized and doing it anyway are being called haters. Jessica Mokdad was a young girl in Dearborn 
who was murdered by her stepfather. Now, I have been, it's become news because the media is taking me out because I'm using her name. Yeah, I'm using her name because she didn't die in vain and someone is going to tell this girl's story. Now, the family is very adamant, the family that was complicit in her murder, because as you see in these honor murders, the family is very much involved. The mother may not have been the one that committed the murder, but the mother was the one that lured the girl back to her home. Or in the case of the most egregious mass honor killing of the, um, uh, in Canada, uh, the, 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 the I'm, I'm spacing, what is it, Shafi, Shafi girls? Um, three sisters and an aunt who was actually the first wife, but they were, he was polygamous, of the father who killed four, four girls who wanted to live a Western life. Listen to what I'm saying. You have sisters, you have mothers. You cannot let this happen. It is on you. If you are silent, then you're an accomplice. If you side with people that are trying to shut us up and call your attention to it because the media is afraid to do it. The media self-enforces the Sharia. Under the Sharia, if you defame or criticize Islam, it is blasphemy. And in Muslim countries under the Sharia, blasphemers are put to death. In Pakistan, they're put to death. They're assassinated. In the West, your character's assassinated. This is a very real issue, and it is not going away. And what's so terrible, terrible about the honor killings in the West is these girls, these Muslim girls, generally are, follow Islamic tradition to a point. But it's, it's never enough. And in the case of, for example, Jessica Mokdad, um, it was interesting because when we were coming under, when Robert and I were coming under an enormous amount of fire for naming the conference Jessica Moked and they said it wasn't an honor killing, a friend of hers finally came forward and said, you know, she was scared to death that she was going to be honor killed. She didn't want to live according to Islamic tradition. And so she was going back and forth between the stepfather's house and the, her real father, her biological father's house, but they were both trying to force her to live under Islamic tradition. And she wanted help from this friend, and this friend was scared. And he didn't help her. And she was shot execution style in the head by her stepfather. And her friend, Darwin Giles, came forward, and he'll be speaking at that conference. Muslim girls that don't want to live under the Sharia in the West should be given our full protections and your full voice. You who are yelling at me, who are not wearing the hijab, who are in a free country and opening up a big mouth to me are completely and utterly free under the Constitution of the United States. Is that not true? Is that not, should that not be for every girl like you? Every girl. Shouldn't every girl who wants to wear lipstick and high heel shoes be able to wear them? Is it that? Is it, I, mean, is it, is it, I mean, I can't believe that I'm even having this conversation in this country. But I am. And I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. And we're told that I'm not tolerant. I'm very tolerant. But tolerance, when applied to evil, is a crime. And we have to make law enforcement aware of the ideology that sanctions this and that it is a family affair many times. Asia Hassan in Buffalo, New York, was married to a moderate who, again, the whole community, the whole Muslim community knew. They knew that he was uh, 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 beating her up. He knew that, he, that she wanted to get out, and he said she could not leave. You cannot, there's a huge controlling factor in this. Now, he had started a television station called Bridges because it was a bridge between the Muslim world and the Western world. And she got it together to leave. And you have no idea the courage it takes to leave because it's not just the husband and it's not just the family. Many times it's the mosque and it's the community. And he took a knife, a sword off the wall, and he decapitated her in Buffalo, New York. There should be a more... Um, a, egregious penalty for honor killings, for a person getting murdered because they want to live free. There should be a capital punishment for it. We should make it absolutely, we should ostracize it, pariahize that crime 
Instead, you have Norel Maliki, a young girl in Arizona, the first prosecution based on honor killing, successful prosecution, whose father run her, ran her over because she was too westernized. He told, the, he told the prosecutor that, and then had the audacity to say, you can't go for the capital punishment. Because if you go for capital punishment, it's racism. So let me understand this. You kill under Islamic law, and then you can't say, well, you killed under Islamic law, because that's racism? I mean, if your brain is in a knots at this point, and by the way, they didn't go for the death penalty. I thought that was egregious. I thought that was wrong. I, I, I thought that was terrible. Because you are invariably sanctioning. You're invariably sanctioning honor killing. Look, the best case that I can give you was in 2009, I got a story from a couple of my readers, actual friends of a girl that had disappeared. Her name was Rivka Barry. Rivka Barry was a young Muslim girl who had converted out of Islam. She hid it from her family because they were devout and she was terrified. Her mosque was spying on her, the Noor Mosque. They called her parents and they told her, told the parents that uh, she had converted out of Islam. And the father came home, he was on a business trip, flew home and said, if you have this Jesus in your heart, I'm going to kill you. Now she ran away. Now I got the news story from friends when she ran away and they thought she, they thought that she had been murdered. She had met foul play, of course, because she was terrified of this. And I remember saying to Spencer, I said, you think she got away? And he said, they never get away. Because they never get away. So imagine my utter and supreme joy when this girl shows up in Florida, alive. She ran down to Florida to a pastor because there's no network for these girls. None. Everybody's scared to death to touch the subject. And she got sued for telling that lie. Rivka Barry did not, did not. Rivka Barry went to Florida, and what, what, what ensued was a court case to bring her back to the household of a family that had threatened to kill her for leaving Islam. And I began to follow this story. I began to follow the story, and I urge you to go online and go to YouTube and Google Rivka Barry and listen to her own words. Now, the bottom line is, is because of her, law, uh, her legal uh, counsel, because of all of the public, because I was a huge public advocate for Rivka Barry, huge. She was demonized in the media. This, this li sweet little 17-year-old girl, no drugs, no drinking, Christian, as some radical Christian fundamentalist, because she converted out of Islam. And the bottom line is, can you imagine, because she converted to, to Christianity, how demonized she was, where the, the, the newspapers were writing about the sweet little virgin, that she's wearing dark red nail polish and rouge blush. This is what was in the, yeah, this is how they were reporting on this story. She was saved. She was saved. And when she was saved, the lawyer, the lawyer for her parents, who, who had wanted to kill her, sued me for $10 million and lost. Lost. He dropped that lawsuit. What is that? I'll tell you what that is. That is the imposition of the Sharia, shutting down free speech. Because oh, he, like, he didn't like what I said about him. Oh, please. If I didn't like what people said about me, everybody in the country would be sued, for goodness sake. The bottom line is, you want, this guy wants to defend, this guy wants to defend, the, to oppress a young girl who just wants to be free, who just wants to make her own choice. You know, when I look at women, and particularly the feminists and the, and, and the leftists, how, you know, choice, choice, choice. Well, this is an even more fundamental choice. This is the choice. Right equals life. Rights equal life. You understand me? And I am telling you it is coming to this country and if you either turn away or make it easy by demonizing people like me, you want me out there. You want me fighting. There are so many girls that secretly write me that, to get them to a safe house. And you have to understand something. They were raised in Islam. So they have to leave everything. And I mean everything, every friend, uh, family, home, school, it is such an incredible journey. And if they do and it becomes public, you become Rifka Barry. Hello? 
Anyway, I'd like to close, and, and I'd like you to read my books, because the media is not reporting on this issue. It is a very, uh, you know, scary, and um, I, I think for us, for women, the most dangerous issue that we face, because as, what do you think, it's just Muslim girls and it doesn't matter? It matters. They all, every single one of those girls, every single one of those girls matter the way you matter. And you have to fight for them because if you diminish and dehumanize women in society, it will be you and it will be your daughters that will feel the ill effect. This is not static. Everything is fluid. Everything is moving. And it's moving in a very terrible direction. And so I urge you to get involved, and I urge you to stand for human rights, and to stand for freedom, and to stand for free speech. Look, remember one thing about the First Amendment. It is the First Amendment. It's not the Eighth Amendment. It's not the Tenth Amendment. It's the First Amendment. It's the First Amendment in a government, the very first government in the history of man, the very first moral government in the history of man, based on individual rights. Remember that. The only one. And everything noble and just and magnificent we achieved as a nation was a logical fidelity to that principle, individual rights. And free speech was the very first amendment. First. And it was not just, it was not, and by the way, political speech is the most protected speech. And understand something, and understand this, it's not just the ideas that we like, that's easy. The first amendment protects ideas that we don't like. Because then who decides what's good and what's forbidden? Those thugs? This loudmouth? <laughs> I'd like now to turn this over to a warrior, um, a, a hugely noble woman, a former Muslim who has lived, walked the walk, talked the talk, and